From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Ed Gumby, Mr. Dollar. Attorney for Sheldon Forbes. Oh, hello, Mr. Gumby. How are you? Oh, I don't know. The hearing's been set for 2.30 this afternoon. Okay, I'll be there. No need to, particularly. As I told you yesterday, he requested me to waive trial and plead guilty. Well, won't he be sentenced today? No, this is just a preliminary hearing. He'll probably be sentenced before the week's out, though. The court will simply consider the waiver and inform him of his rights today. Oh. Anything I can do? No, I don't think so. I'm going to try to talk to him again and get him to reconsider the waiver. I doubt if I'll have much luck, but I'll try. All he has to do is return the money he stole. Well, buck up, Mr. Gumby. If he won't return it, maybe someone else will. Hmm? What do you mean? I'm going to try and find out what he did with it. My company wants it back, sure. But we also want Forbes to have a fair chance. You're pretty decent, Mr. Dollar. Thanks. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Adjustment Bureau, 418 Elizabeth Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Forbes matter. Embezzlement and a very frustrating case. Expense account continued. Item 6, $3.50, lunch. For myself and a Mr. Arnold Haven, head of the accounting department for Century Styles Incorporated. Mr. Haven, a tall, balding man in a dark suit, had ulcers. His poached egg and dry toast didn't interest him too much. Uh, Well, what's going to happen to Forbes? Oh, I don't know, Mr. Haven. That depends on several things. Right now, I have to tell you that it looks like he'll go to prison. Worse than that, it looks like he wants to go to prison. He's waived trial. Prison. That's too bad. Too bad. I always liked Sheldon Forbes. You, uh, you hired him, did you, Mr. Haven? Yes, I hired him. He was a good man right from the start. He did his job, and he did it well. I never had a complaint against Forbes. Why do you suppose he stole the money? You've got me, Mr. Dollar. We paid him the going rate. That's a good salary for accountants. He seemed happy enough with it. Well, he knew he was in line for substantial raises. Uh Uh-huh. I could understand it, in a way, if he had a family and heavy responsibility... Or if he played the market, or if he gambled. But Forbes, he just baffles me. Yeah, it baffles me, too. Huh? Oh, yes, of course. Well, the people around the office, they're, uh, they're pretty upset about this. Any particular people, Mr. Haven? Everybody. But anyone in particular? A girl, for instance. Oh, oh a girl, yes, I see. Well, no. Did he go out with any girl in your office? No, no, most of them are married. No, at least as far as I know, Forbes didn't go with any of the girls there. He kept to himself. Oh, he might have lunched with one or the other now and then, but... No, no, he more or less kept to himself. Uh Uh-huh. Well, the reason I asked you, Mr. Haven, is that what little I've been able to find out about his personal life isn't very helpful. My company wants the money back. We're willing to give him a fair break if we can get it back. He's pretty stubborn about cooperating. Yes, we know about that, Mr. Dollar. But how can we give him a break if he doesn't want us to? And we can't find out anything about him. Look, if there's anything you can think of, any any reason he might have had for taking the money... And I've racked my brain. I can't think of any reason. I... Oh. Now, wait a minute. Just a minute. I did notice a change coming Forbes. It was about a month or six weeks ago. Oh, it was nothing, really. It was just, a, I guess, an anxiety about him. Well, he took all the money within the last four weeks. Would that correspond? Roughly, yes. Well, that's a start. I hope. I returned to the accounting offices of Century Styles with Mr. Haven and spent two hours questioning different members of his staff regarding Sheldon Forbes. His habits and his personality were pretty much the same as Haven himself had described them. Expense account item seven, four dollars, gasoline. I put a tank full of gas in my rented car and went over to an apartment on 59th Street where Sheldon Forbes had lived. According to the penciled note above the first door to the right of the entrance, Mrs. Anastasia Kanopka was the manager. 
Yes, uh, what is, please? You're Mrs. Kanopka? Yes. What do you want, mister? I understand Mr. Sheldon Forbes lives here. Is that right? Oh, yes. Bad. Bad. I hear he still monies. Bad. He, he not in, uh, in uh, jail, I think. Yes, I know about that, Mrs. Kanopka. I'm from the insurance company, and we're involved in this case. We're trying to recover some of that money if we can. I wonder if you'd help me. Well, I fix dinner for my husband. He's come home from work. It so... won't take long. Uh, what I do? Well, I, I want to know about Sheldon Forbes. What? The works, Mrs. Kanopka. Did he drink, gamble? Did he stay in nights or go out? Did he pay his rent? He always pay his rent. You are policeman? An insurance investigator. Uh, please, uh, sometime else. Maybe you speak to my husband. He speak much better than me. But it's important now. I talk to Mr. Forbes on telephone. He called me from jail. He say I no have to answer any questions. No, no, you don't have to answer any questions, Mrs. Kanopka. But I'd sure appreciate it if you would. M- my husband home pretty soon. You ask him. You can help him, possibly. Now, would you like to help him in this trouble? All right, mister, but the, how I know these things you ask about the uh, men who live here? Well, well, look, how about his friends? Who visited him? Uh, I I cannot say. No visitor. Was he a good tenant? No trouble, like Mr. O'Sullivan on third floor. Mr. O'Sullivan always drunk. Called police twice. Mr. Forbes no drink whiskey. Uh Uh-huh. Did you ever meet his girl? Girl? Sure. He had a girlfriend, didn't he? Oh, I think you mistake. I don't ever see girlfriend here. All right. How long have you known him? Five, six years, maybe, ever since he moved in here to this place. But no girl? No. Well, how'd he spend his time? Work. He worked very hard. No, I mean, besides working at the office, how else did Forbes spend his time? I... Oh, he poor feller, that one. Huh? Sure, he steals money, but he poor feller just the same. For him, I feel. Yeah. Mr. Forbes, he quiet and, and he thinks. I know he live up in that little room quiet and think. He does all time think. No whiskey, no girls. Oh, he paints sometimes, listen to music, think. Oh, my husband didn't burn. Please, you go Well, uh, just a minute. I'd like to see his apartment if I can. No, no matter. Here. You bring back key, please. Sure. Thank you, Mrs. Kanopka. The apartment Sheldon Forbes called home was as dismal as the neighborhood. A tiny closet kitchen, a bed that came out of the wall, a pair of grimy windows that looked across the court onto another pair of equally grimy windows. The furniture was threadbare and dusty. A small ironing board and iron attested to the fact that Sheldon Forbes laundered his own shirts. Other small evidences of frugality were about the premises. A hot plate and a can of souring cream. Two suits of clothes, neatly brushed and pressed, but inexpensive. The record player and a collection of a half a dozen good albums were the only sign of material accomplishment. The painting materials, easel, canvas, and oils were also inexpensive. No liquor, no jewelry, no expensive clothes. Nothing that cost $4,285 or anything like it. Oh. Here's your key, Mrs. Kanopka. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well... What you think? I think he's had a very lonely life here. Oh, Doc. Yes. Lonely is the word. Lonely. Uh, oh, wait, has he got a car? In back, through alley. Thanks. It was a Ford. Vintage of 1946. Tightly locked up. The paint was scaling away, the tires worn down, the mileage 77,000 miles. He certainly hadn't blown the money on a fancy car. Now I felt completely frustrated. Expense account item 8, 79 cents, dinner. I had it in a neighborhood restaurant called the 79er, a place I learned where Sheldon Forbes frequently took his evening meal. The restaurant manager, a man named Alexander Dupolis, Remembered Forbes and he liked him. A woman who ran a bakery shop across the street also remembered him as the young man who bought a roll there every night. 
probably the role to go with a lonely cup of coffee in his room the next morning. She liked him, too. All in all, I was getting a composite picture of Sheldon Forbes that didn't look quite right. Whatever he was to the people who knew him casually, he wasn't a man who ever had any money to spend. I dropped in at the city jail about 7.30, and I was surprised to find lawyer Edward Gumby sitting on a bench, briefcase in hand. Dollar? Hello, Mr. Gumby. Nothing new, huh? Well, that's the way it goes, I guess. We had some action today. Oh? Yeah. The hearing was this afternoon. Man from the district attorney's office took about 15 minutes to lay out the evidence against Forbes and make the charges. Uh Uh-huh. I spent the whole time pleading with Forbes not to go ahead with the waiver. Did I miss anything? No, he wouldn't open up at all. Just said he'd spent the money. I couldn't talk him out of the waiver, so it went through. When will he be sentenced? They set the date for Friday. I don't know whether they'll get around to it or not. I'd like to talk to him again. Has he been moved yet? No. Nope. I thought he'd be transferred to the sheriff's office. Well, ordinarily he would, but since he waived trial, they announced bail. It's proper procedure in cases like this. It gives him a couple of days to straighten out his affairs. What? Somebody bail him out? I did. Oh. Has he left yet? Uh-uh. Won't get out till late. That's when the shift changes. Think it's worth trying to see him? Yeah. I think I'll stick around, Mr. Gumby. I gotta find out something about this case. An hour later, when Sheldon Forbes emerged from the doorway and turned right, I was following him. When he caught a cab and headed uptown, I caught one and stayed right with him. When he got out at the Empress Theater and walked around to the stage door, I was standing by the alley entrance. Ten minutes later, he came back out, hailed a cab. Once more, I followed. This time, I followed him to his apartment on 59th Street. I waited 15 minutes before I went in. Forbes? Forbes? Hey, Forbes, it's me, Johnny Dollar. I want to talk to you. It took me a few seconds to understand what it was. I got a couple of whiffs of it coming from under his door. Forbes! The room was acrid, stinging with gas fumes, and Sheldon Forbes was stretched down on the floor of his six-foot kitchen. When I picked him up and carried him out, I didn't know whether he was alive or dead. There'll be another intriguing episode in our story of the Forbes matter tomorrow. Tomorrow? A switch in the case that starts a real chase and a race against time. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> <laughs>